एवरीवन वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी विद एमजे दिस इज एमजे योर एंथुसियास्टिक गाइड सो वेदर यू आर अ नीट एस्पिरेंट और सिंपली अ बायोलॉजी लवर दिस वीडियो इज फिल्ड विद वैल्यूएबल इनसाइट्स एंड नॉलेज ओके सो स्टे ट्यून टिल द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो एंड इफ यू हैवेंट ऑलरेडी प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आईकॉन सो दैट यू नेवर मिस एन अपडेट रिमेंबर टू लाइक comment and share this video with your friends okay so let's get to the video hello everyone in today's video we are going to cover the topic stem from the chapter morphology of flowering plants this is the lecture number 2 of this chapter and for the previous lectures you can check out the playlist link attached here all right and for other free courses from class 11 biology you can check out the links in the description box below All right, so let's begin with the video. So, what is the stem? The stem is the ascending part of a plant. Okay, the ascending part that we see above the ground comprises of the shoot system of the plant, and the shoot system comprises of the stem, the leaf, the branches, the flowers, the inflorescence, the fruits so everything that we see above the ground level comprises the sh uh, shoot system of the plant okay all of these portions of the plant which are above the ground level come under the shoot system of the plant and one of the parts among the, the this shoot system is the stem stem is present above the ground level okay so the shoot system develops from the plumule part of the embryo all right which means that the stem which is also a part of the shoot system is ultimately being formed from the plumule part of the embryo so that is why we say that stem also develops from the plumule the stem bears nodes and internodes so nodes are the regions on the stem these points on the stem where leaves are arising are known as nodes okay and in between nodes in between two successive nodes a region is present which is known as the internode okay this portion between two nodes is known as the internode the stem also bears certain buds now these buds are of two types they could either be terminal buds which are present at the apex of the stem at the tip of the stem or these buds could be present in the axil of the leaves for example this is a leaf and there is a bud present in its axil okay this bud is known as the axillary bud so this is attached to the stem but it is present in the axil of the leaf so these two kinds of buds can be seen on a stem these buds are known as terminal buds and axillary buds okay so this was about the shoot system of the plant and the stem is one of the major components of the shoot system and because the shoot system develops from the plumule we can say that the stem also develops from the plumule part of the embryo okay so let us move forward so when a stem is young it looks like this it looks green in color but when it gets older okay and if the plant is getting mature more mature over as the time passes the stem will become thick it would become brown in appearance and if the plant is going to become a tree it would develop a thick bark which would look like this okay so all the plants when they are very young they have green colored tender stems and when they mature they develop thick stems which are hard and which are brownish in appearance which are brown in appearance and these young stems these are very soft and tender which can easily be bent okay so what are the functions of stem the main function of the stem as we all know is spreading out of the branches and these branches bear leaves they bear flowers they bear fruits okay as we saw in this image this is the stem it is spreading out branches which are bearing flowers and leaves and fruits okay so this is the main purpose of the stem apart from this a stem is also responsible for the conduction of water and minerals from the roots to the other parts of the plant okay 
and from and also they are responsible for the transport of photosynthetes okay photosynthetes are basically the food which is synthesized via the process of photosynthesis in the leaves so in order to transport that food from the leaves to other parts of the plant stem is involved okay because the stem contains the vascular tissues which are the conducting tissues which are responsible for the transport of water minerals and food the stem is also responsible for the storage of food okay and for storage of water food is stored in examples of plants which store food in their stems includes ginger and potato many more examples are also there which we will study later on water is stored in the stem of opuntia now these functions are seen in stems which have modified themselves to perform these functions a general plant which has a stem will not show these kinds of functions in certain plants the stem has also modified itself in order to perform functions other than the conduction and spreading and bearing of leaves flowers and fruits so these functions are of stem are seen in such plants okay similarly in some plants stems have mod modified themselves for support for example tendrils are there in grape vines which help the grape vines to climb up okay because the tendrils provide them support in order to climb huge distances then there is watermelon okay water in watermelon also tendrils are seen which provide them support the stems have also modified themselves for protection okay they have modified themselves into sharp and pointy thorns in bougainvillea for example which protects them from predators okay from grazing animals stems are also responsible for vegetative propagation for example runners in grass stolons in strawberry offsets or underground stems in potato all of these plants contain stems which for example grass strawberry potato their stems can also be propagated vegetatively so we would study about all these in detail later on see here comes the modifications of stems so the typical function of stems which we have studied is spreading out of its branches which bears fruits flowers and leaves and also they are responsible for the conduction of water minerals and photosynthesis but apart from these typical functions certain plants have stems which have modified themselves to perform certain different functions as well so these stem modifications can be categorized into three types okay three categories underground stem modifications are those stem modifications in which the stem is present below the ground level okay it the stem is present under the ground sub aerial stem modifications are those stem modifications in which the stem is present just above the ground okay it is just running over the ground it is not above the ground it is not below the ground it is just above the ground attached to it or just a few centimeters above it then there are aerial stem modifications in which the stem is present above the ground level it is not attached to the ground or it is not present near to the ground level but above the ground level okay so in underground stem modifications certain examples are rhizome tuber corn bulb comb bulbs so these are the examples of underground stem modifications then runner stolon offset and suckers are the examples of sub aerial stem modifications tendrils thorns phyllocletes and cladod cladod are the examples of aerial stem modifications now we will study about each of these categories and their subtypes one by one so let us begin with the underground stem modifications first now underground stem modifications as already seen comprises of four types which are rhizome tuber comb and bulb now let us look at these one by one so rhizome what is a rhizome rhizome is a perennial perennial means which can live for more than 2 years okay so rhizome is a perennial fleshy underground stem it is an underground stem because we as already told we are studying the underground stem modifications so rhizome is a perennial fleshy underground stem okay fleshy as in it is not very dry it contains stored food it is very fleshy the stem is divided into nodes and internodes 
as you can see here various nodes are present where the leaves are arising and in between the two nodes there is a space which is known as the inter node okay so fleshy will not always mean that some food is stored here fleshy can also mean that uh, it contains some substance inside it which gives it a fleshy and a soft a soft when you touch that stem uh, you would feel like it has something inside it okay it would be uh, you can press it easily and you can uh, feel the softness inside the stem that there is something inside it it is not very dry and hard okay so in that sense it means fleshy fleshy does not always mean here that food would be stored in that stem so as you can see the stem is divided into nodes and internodes in rhizomes also although the stem is modified but the nodes and internodes are present so this is the example of a rhizome present in water lily so this is the rhizome it is present under the ground okay so it comprises of nodes where the leaves are present and in between the two nodes there is a space which is called as internode so these two are nodes and this is the internode adventitious roots occur on the lower node so adventitious roots are what which arise from the plant parts other than the radical okay the true roots are those which arise from the radical part of the embryo and all of the other roots which are arising from other than the radical part are known as the adventitious roots now since these roots are arising from the rhizome which is a modified stem that is why these roots are known as adventitious roots so these roots usually occur on the lower nodes they will not be present to, uh, towards the upper part of the plant as you will uh, observe the length of the plant and you will go down they would be present much lower okay on the lower nodes these adventitious roots would be present so these rhizomes are seen in ginger turmeric water lily lotus okay in all of these plants these are important examples please remember them in all of these plants rhizomes are seen so ginger we all consume ginger okay so ginger is also a, an example of an underground stem modification the part of the ginger that we eat is a modified underground stem which is known as the rhizome see it also comprises of nodes and internodes so these lines which you see on the ginger these lines are the node areas and it in between these two nodes this region is this is known as the internode all right and certain roots are also arising from this rhizome these are the adventitious roots so this was all about rhizome now let us look at the tuber so just think for a moment when have you consumed a plant which is a, a food item which is a tuber so the potato that you consume that is nothing but a tuber tuber is an underground stem modification it is not a fruit it is an underground stem modification so it is the stem that we are consuming in the form of potato so let us understand what a tuber uh, what are the general features of a tuber so tuber is an oval or spherical underground swollen stem structure it is an underground structure because we are studying underground stem modifications it is swollen and it is a modified stem so it is a stem structure it does not bear adventitious roots now in contrast to rhizomes that we studied which which used to bear adventitious root which have adventitious roots in contrast to them the tubers do not contain adventitious roots so this is one of the major uh, differentiating factors between tubers and rhizomes please remember this point stem tubers are covered by corky skin so corky skin is a very thin papery like skin so we all have seen potatoes and they comprise of a very corky skin very thin layer of potatoes okay when we peel them off it comes out off very easily because it is very thin and papery in appearance so the stem tubers are covered by corky skin with lenticels for aeration so lenticels are these pores which are present okay certain small pores are present on stem tubers which are known as lenticels which are responsible for aeration that means for the exchange of air okay lenticels are responsible for such gaseous exchange and they are present on the stem tubers so number of spirally arranged depressions depressions are certain 
uh, in Hindi we call, we can call them as a gadha, a hole is present on the potato tuber. Okay, so a number of spirally arranged depressions, these depressions are called as eyes. Okay, they are present on the potato tuber. These eyes or these depressions, okay, uh, these holes we can say in a more layman term on the potato tuber or in general on any tuber, these comprises of buds and these buds are what help in vegetative propagation. Okay, and these eyes, they are basically what these are the nodes. These eyes, uh, let us look in the diagram. These are the eyes of the potato tuber. See, they are also looking like eyes only. So, these portions are known as the eyes. They comprise of buds and whenever we take a portion of the potato plant, we cut this portion, we sow it in the soil, each of these eye is capable of giving rise to a new potato plant. So, this bud will give rise to shoot and root and ultimately a new potato plant would be established. So, as you can see, a shoot here has already come out from one of the eyes. So, this is how the bud in the eye will germinate. And all of these eyes are equivalent to the nodes present on the stem. Okay, because it is from these nodes that a new plant is arising. So, this was all about the tuber and the vegetative propagation that we studied initially in the functions of stem. This is how vegetative propagation is taking place in tuber specifically by planting the portion of the potato which comprises of eye. We can establish or uh, we can uh, form a new, we can give rise to a, we can propagate a new plant. In case of a potato, a potato plant. In case of some other plant which has a tuber, we can plant the portion of the uh, underground stem which has an eye into the soil and it would give rise to a new plant respectively. Now, let us look at corms. So, corm is an example, also an example of an underground stem modification. Now, what happens in corms? A corm is an annual vertically growing, okay, it grows vertically. So, the rhizomes grow horizontally, whereas the corms, they grow vertically, okay. This is one of the major differentiating factors between a rhizome and a corm. It is a thick, highly condensed, okay, it is a highly condensed stem modification. It is spherical or subspherical in appearance. It is an underground stem and it is responsible for the storage of food. Okay. It is annual which means it completes its life cycle in a single growing season. Now, it bears various circular nodes. Now, the nodes in combs are not very clear cut or distinct. Okay. They have sheathing leaf bases. Adventitious roots are present. See, adventitious roots are present in corms also. In tubers, they were absent. In rhizomes, they were present. Similarly, in corms also, they are present. Okay? And they bear scale leaves. So, scale leaves are very dry and papery kind of thin leaves. They are not fleshy. Fleshy leaves are those which contain uh, food material or water. Okay? They are plump looking. But scale leaves are very dry and thin papery kind of leaves. So, they bear scale leaves, they bear adventitious roots, they are spherical or subspherical in appearance. So, the buds present externally, they give rise to new shoots and new combs. So, buds are present in this uh, picture, it is not visible, but certain buds are also present in combs. Okay, externally they are present, which are capable of giving rise to new shoots and new combs. So, here a bud must be present, that is why a new shoot is uh, arising from this part of the plant, okay. And these regions, these lines, these are known as nodes and in between these two regions is the region which we call as the internode, okay. So, the nodes and nodes are not very distinct in combs. So, examples are Colocasia, Crocus, Zaminkans, okay. These are the important examples of combs. So, please remember these examples. Now, let us come to bulbs. So, bulbs are also an underground stem modification. 
they comprises of condensed shoot okay now shoot here comprises of both stems and leaves so a bulb is basically when we say a bulb it is an underground stem modification with also which contains leaves also okay so bulb comprises of both stems and leaves so it has a reduced discoid stem okay a disc like stem is there which is very reduced see this is the stem area okay it is a reduced disc like stem various fleshy scales are present so these fleshy leaves scale fleshy leaves are present in these leaves food is stored okay in the leaf bases the food is stored adventitious roots are present okay so here adventitious roots can be seen in the stem so what is bulb ba basically bulb is an underground condensed shoot having a reduced discoid stem with fleshy scales buds and adventitious roots it stores food in the scales okay that is these fleshy leaves they store the food okay in the leaf base the food is stored and in the bud examples are onion and lily okay two important examples of bulb are onion and lily please remember these examples now let's come to the sub aerial stem modifications now number 1 is the runners now runners are special narrow narrow means they are very thin green colored horizontal branches see these this horizontal branch that is running just over the ground is the runner okay they develop from an axillary bud okay axillary bud we just saw in the beginning what an axillary bud looks like which is present in the axil of the leaf attached to the stem they creep on the ground as you can see in this picture the runner is creeping on the ground just attached to the ground and roots at intervals so it will not contain roots all over its length in cert at certain intervals roots would be present for example here the roots are present here they are present here they are present these roots are adventitious roots because they are arising from the stem they have tufts of adventitious roots to attach to the soil now what is the purpose of these adventitious roots they are helping the runner to attach to the soil okay and these adventitious roots are present in bundles in tufts that is why this word tufts is mentioned here so examples of runners where are runners seen they are seen in lawn grass which sign the scientific name of lawn grass is cynodon dactylon in oxalis they are seen in centella they are seen okay and this is the image of a runner so see nodes are present the runner is present here adventitious roots are present at intervals okay and this is the aerial crown shoot the shoot area is also present wherever the roots are present the axillary bud it develops into crown okay the internode is present in between the two nodes this is the axillary a, a, this is the aerial shoot crown which is present above aerial why it is written aerial because it is present above the ground level okay and the scale leaves are also present but basically you need to remember that these runners are horizontal branches which are very thin okay and they root at certain intervals they have tufts of adventitious roots at these intervals which help these runners to attach to the soil and just re remember one or two examples okay so this was about runner now let us come to stolons now stolons are also like runners but with a few minor differences now runners were present attached to the ground okay they were running very close to the ground basically they were attached to the ground level but stolons are present a few millimeters above the ground level there is a distance between the ground and the stolon okay see this is a space that is present between the two so because of this space they are capable of crossing over small obstacles as well now a runner would not be able to cross a rock if it is present in its way but a stolon can easily cross over that rock and grow over it that is why they are called long distance runners because they can cover long distances because of this capability of growing over their obstacles they have longer and thicker internodes they are elongated they are also horizontal or arched runners we can call them as runners also they are a type of runners only okay 
but with a few minor differences as already seen that there is a space that is present between the stolon and the ground level examples of stolons are seen in jasmine wild strawberry peppermint okay so please remember these examples and see uh, at the nodes buds are arising and roots are being produced so this is how uh, runners uh, stolons grow now let's come to offsets now offsets are one internode long small runners Offsets are, offsets are also type of runners, but they are only one internode long. So this is where the uh, this is just uh, the length or total length of an offset. This is where an offset ends because they are only one internode long, small runners, and each node, each node bears a rosette of leaves. Okay, a rosette of leaves is present at each node, and a tuft of roots is also present at the ground or the water level now if this pres uh, plant is present at the water level the roots would be present immersed at the water level only okay just uh, above the water the plant is present the roots would be present just uh, below the surface of water and if that plant is present at the ground level similarly the rosette of leaves would be present above the ground level and the roots would be present just below the ground level right so examples of offsets are seen in pistia which is also known as water lettuce ecornia which is also known as the water hyacinth okay so as you can see this is ecornia or water hyacinth and this is pistia this is the offset that is present which is the type of runner only but it is only one interlo internode long that is only two nodes are present in an offset because in between two nodes one internode is present and offset is only one internode long so at one node the rosette of leaves and roots are present at the second node rosette of leaves and roots are present and in between is present the internode or the offset similarly in pistia also offset is present between two nodes because it is only one internode long now let us come to the modification suckers okay now what are suckers suckers are non green note here they are not green in color they are slender that is they are very thin stem branch that arises from the underground base of an erect crown so they grow horizontally in the soil okay see they grow they are growing horizontally in the soil and then they come out obliquely upwards okay like in a diagonal manner oblique manner they come upwards giving rise to new aerial shoots see these are the new aerial shoots okay so examples of these suckers they are seen in chrysanthemum mint banana and pineapples so please remember these examples these are very important and see adventitious roots are also arising from these suckers okay so this was all about suckers now let's come to the aerial stem modifications now aerial stem modifications comprise of tendrils now tendrils are thread like sensitive structures they can coil around and support and help the plant in climbing okay see see these coil like structures here here these are known as tendrils they are responsible for supporting the plant so that the plant, plant can climb upwards using a support and to uh, now tendrils also they would need certain uh, support in order to attach the plant uh, to that support right so the plant has tendrils which help the plant to attach to a support so that the plant can climb upwards okay in order to uh, hang something we need a hook so tendrils basically act as hook for the plant so that they can attach or hang the plant to a physical support that must be present in its environment they are sensitive structures okay they are very tender okay they can coil around support help the plant in climbing examples of tendrils are seen in gourds and grape vines gourds include cucumber pumpkins watermelon okay and in grape vines they can be seen see this is the example of watermelon tendrils are present here in cucumber tendrils are seen okay so please remember these examples now one more point here is that the 
see now the stem comprises of the axillary buds and terminal buds right so the tendrils the stem tendrils develop from the axillary buds okay this is an important point to remember questions have also appeared from this point so please remember this point now let's come to thorns this is very important thorns are also an aerial stem modification all the aerial stem modifications are those which are present above the ground okay they are stiff sharp structures they have that have lost their growing point and they have become hard now they have lost their growing point that means they are not growing further they stop their growth at a certain length okay thorns are short structures which are very pointed they be, they are very hard but they are a stem modification they have arisen from a stem axillary buds of stem may also get modified into thorns so axillary buds which are present on the stem and the axil of the leaves attached to the stem they can also get modified into thorns what is the purpose of thorns they reduce transpiration so it prevents the water loss in plants they protects the plants from browsing animals okay so predators which can eat uh, that particular plant the plant gets protected from such animals which can eat those plants so it serves the purpose of both protection and protection also from water loss example is seen in citrus bougainvillea plant so this is the citrus plant this is the bougainvillea plant you can see thorns are present in both of these plants okay now let's come to phylloclades phylloclades are green flattened cylindrical stems so as you can see in this image they are green colored stem like structures they are flattened or they they could be flattened or they could be cylindrical so this is the example of a flattened appearance and this is the example of a cylindrical appearance okay they get transformed into a leaf like structure they are they have trans as you can see since they are green in color they have transformed into a leaf like structure they do not look for a layman if they it, it, it he would see a plant he would automatically assume that this must be the leaf part of the plant but no these are the stems which have modified themselves into green colored flattened structures which are looking like leaves that is why it is written they are leaf like structures they are of unlimited growth okay they can grow unlimited in an unlimited manner there is no stopping to their growth they can take over the function of photosynthesis because they are green in color that means they contain chlorophyll now they can perform photosynthesis also okay they are seen in plants of arid regions okay very dry regions desert areas in such plants phylloclades are seen example is opuntia and then there is euphorbia plant see opuntia is this flattened leaf like structures it contains and the cylindrical structures are present in euphorbia so this was about phylloclades now let's come to cladodes cladodes are green branches of limited growth now here the growth was unlimited please note this is an important point in phylloclades the growth was unlimited but here the growth is limited so they are also green colored branches only okay they are of limited growth usually one internode long only okay they have taken up the function of photosynthesis from the leaves they are also capable of performing the function of photosynthesis in these plants true leaves are reduced to scales or spines and the stems have taken up the function of photosynthesis and the stems look leaf like in appearance so if you will see this image you will think that these must be the leaves but no these big leaf like structures are actually modified stem and leaves are these tiny spines which are present in the axil of the stem okay these uh, which are present here attached to the stem these structures are leaves because these true leaves they have reduced themselves very much to scales or spines this was the example of ruscus in asparagus also these portions which you would assume are leaves are actually stems which have modified themselves into leaf like structures and if you will zoom this image you will find that leaves are present here these spine like structures are actually the true leaves which have reduced themselves into scales or these spines 
Okay, so these are the two important examples of cladodes. Now let's come to NEET PYQs. This question is the latest question from NEET 2022. We have to identify the correct set of statements. Statement A is saying the leaflets are modified into pointed hard thorns in citrus and bougainvillea. This statement is incorrect because the leaflets are not modified, the stems are modified into thorns. The thorns are modifications of stems, not leaflets. And these thorns are the thorns are modifications of stems, and these thorns are found in both citrus and bougainvillea. So, thorns are not a modification of leaflets, they are a modification of stems. So, this statement is incorrect. Statement B is saying axillary buds from slender and spirally coiled tendrils in cucumber and pumpkin. This statement is correct. Now, a stem bears two kinds of buds, terminal buds and axillary buds. And stem tendrils are a modification of axillary buds. They arise from axillary buds. These axillary buds form slender and spirally coiled tendrils and they are seen in both cucumber and pumpkin. So, this statement is correct. Statement C is saying stem is flattened and fleshy in opuntia and modified to perform the function of leaves. This statement is completely correct because phyloclades are being talked about here. Phyloclades are also a stem modification in which the stem is modified into flattened and fleshy structures. Okay, in Opentia, if we talk about the stems are modified into flattened structures. In Euphorbia, the stem is modified into a cylindrical structure. But in Opentia, the modification of stem is into a flattened and fleshy structure which looks like leaves because it is also green in color. And it can also perform the function of leaves that is photosynthesis. Okay, so this statement is also correct. Option number D is saying rhizophora shows vertically upward growing roots that help to get oxygen for respiration. This statement is also correct. Here pneumatophores are being talked about. Now rhizophora is a genus of mangroves. Okay, And these kinds of plants they grow in swampy areas where the soil is always waterlogged. So in these waterlogged soil no air pockets or air spaces are present in between the soil particles. As a result, the roots are not able to breathe underground. They have to come outside the soil and grow vertically upwards in order to get oxygen for respiration. And these roots are known as pneumatophores in rhizophora. You can check out more about rhizophora and pneumatophores in the video attached here. Everything about the roots and their modifications has been discussed in this video. I highly recommend you to check out this video for better understanding of this concept. Okay? Now, statement number E saying sub aerially growing stems in grasses and strawberry help in vegetative propagation. This statement is also correct. Sub aerially growing stems are found in grasses also and in strawberry also. In grasses, they are known as runners and in strawberry, they are called as stolons. Stolons are also a type of runners only. Okay, and both of these help in vegetative propagation. Okay, so this statement is also correct. So, statement number B, C, D and E. These four statements are correct and statement number A is incorrect. So, we have to select the correct option as per our correct set of statements. So, which of the following matches our correct set of statements? Option number 4. Statement B, C, D and E are only the correct statements. So, the correct answer is option number 4. Now, this question is from NEET 2017. In Bougainvillea, thorns are the modifications of Stipule, stem, leaves or adventitious root. So, thorns are the modifications of stems. Okay, the stems reduce themselves into hardened structures which are pointed and they do not grow further. Okay, they have uh, lost the ability to grow further and these structures are known as thorns. These protect the plants from browsing animals and they help to reduce transpiration also. Okay, so these are the modifications of stems. So, option number A, B and D are incorrect. Option number C is the correct answer. This question is from NEET 2016. Which of the following is not a stem modification? Picture of Nepenthes, thorns of citrus, tendrils of cucumber or flattened structures of opuntia. So, flattened structures of opuntia are also known as phyloclades which are a stem modification. 
tendrils of cucumber are also a stem modification thorns of citrus are also a stem modification but picture of nepenthes is not a stem modification so the correct answer is option number a the picture of nepenthes is actually the modification of leaf in particular leaf lamina okay only these b c and d options are modifications of stem so we have to tell in the question that which one of the following is not a stem modification so option number a is not a stem modification so let us move forward now this question again is from neat 2016 stems modified into flat green organs performing the functions of leaves are known as cladodes phyllodes phylloclades or scales now in stem modifications we have to tell uh, from among these which is a stem modification which has modified it, uh, itself into flat green organs which have taken over the function of leaves that is that they can they are capable of performing photosynthesis so flattened green organs we saw in phylloclades in particular opuntia we saw flat green structures are present okay like this which look like leaf and they are green in color that is they are capable of performing photosynthesis so these kind of stem modifications are known as phylloclades okay so option number 3 is the correct answer option number a is incorrect cladode is also a stem modification but they do not contain flattened structures okay so this option is incorrect phyllodes is the modification of leaf not stem and scales are reduced leaves so this is also not a stem modification so the correct answer is option number c phyllodes now this question is from neat 2014 an example of edible okay edible means that we can eat it underground stem is carrot sweet potato ground nut or potato so which one of the following is the example of an edible underground stem so the correct answer is potato potato is a tuber which is an underground stem modification option number a option number c and option number b are incorrect carrot and sweet potato are the modifications of roots not stems groundnut which we consume is a fruit okay it is not the modification of either a stem or a root it is basically a nut or a fruit which develops from the ovary of a flower in a natural way as the fruits are formed so the only example of an edible underground stem is option number d potato so the correct answer is option number d now this question is from aipmt 2011 the eyes of the potato tuber are flower buds axillary buds shoot buds or root buds so the eyes of the potato tuber are axillary buds okay in the stem terminal buds are present and axillary buds are present so in the potato tuber various depressions known as eyes are present which can also be called as nodes and each node or eye comprises of one to three axillary buds axillary buds are present in the axil of the leaves okay they are present in the axil of the leaves So the correct answer is option number C. Option number A, B, and D are incorrect. So that was all for today's video, students. Hope you like this video. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any feedback and suggestions, or if you found something useful, do let me know in the comments below and like this video. Definitely share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.